Well, in the real world, <laughs> uh, like we were talking about, functions frequently occur. Like when you guys go to the store or drive a car or whatever. I, I know, I right? You guys are sitting in line at a grocery store thinking, man, how can I turn this thing into a function? Well, that would be, I guess, considered a real life thing, whether you do it or not. So, sorry. Functions like this are called composite functions. They are functions that depend on other functions, right? So let's say that you got a cog. That's a cog, sorry. Do they put square holes in those things? I don't know what a cog is. I don't even know oh. what that is. Oh, it's like, like the Jetsons, Miss, Mr. Cogley. <laughs> Isn't that right? Cogsworth? I don't know. Are the cog is something in a machine. Hey. I like the yes, yeah. Beauty and the Beast or the Jetsons. I'm more the Jetsons guy, but whatever. <laughs> See, as this thing turns right, maybe you got another cog that's that's right here. But you know, cogs have little things that, that just that's pretty cool. horrible. By the way, sorry, I'm not very artistic, <laughs> but uh, right as this one turns, and it kind of turns this one. Just like the like wheels, like, like wheels, yeah, right. <laughs> or <laughs> well, I said the Jetsons dated you, so <laughs> <laughs> I like the Jetsons. I like I watch the Jetsons too, but that just means that we're old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay hey, with come it. Come on, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say that you're in your car and you got the steering wheel because this is what they look like, right? And then uh, let's say that you turn to the left. Well, what does that do to the wheels? It turns them to the left. <laughs> that, sorry, whatever. We got it. I turned it to the right. Yeah, thank you. Um, sorry, turn it to the right. Let's turn it to the right, then it turns the wheels to the right. See, as you do one thing, it affects something else. And, of course, there's a bunch of stuff in between that that it's affecting as well. Maybe pushing the brakes, hitting the gas. You know, want to do some donuts? I don't know. That's <laughs> that's just how <laughs> composition of functions work. It just means that we're dealing with more than function and then uh, more than one function at a time. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. For the most part, we're going to be doing two at a time. So when it this is just the formal notation for this stuff. That is f of g of x. That's how we would say that sentence right there. It's the same thing as this. F of g of x. So if we solve g of x, then we replace it in f of x like this. Okay. Now if those were reversed so that we had g of f of x, then it would be g of f of x. Now this is an order of operations thing, kind of. We're going to solve f of x first. Whatever we get out of that, we're going to plug it into the g of x. And that's what this example, this example is showing. Right? <clears throat> right here, f of x is in red, that x minus 2. g of x is this blue 5x. So if I wanted f of g of x, I would find f of g of x. Again, this is just a formal, notational, math, nerdy thing. Well, g of x is 5x. So I replace g of x in the parentheses of f of x with this 5x. Now I'm solving f of x, I'm sorry, f of 5x. So in this, in this equation, this function, I'm replacing x with 5x here in blue, and that's what this parentheses is showing. There's no, no reason to simplify this, but there will be other examples where we will, right? If g of x was 5x minus 8, then we'd have in this parentheses 5x minus 8, but then minus this red 2. It's kind of like a machine, right? You guys remember in schools back when they had computers that um, were humongous, and uh, you went into a computer lab and... They showed you a machine, you played a game usually, and then it would put something in the machine, and then it would spit something out later, right? 
and then maybe it would power a race car or it would eat corn. Well, that's what we're doing in this problem, right? So this is h of f of x. So again, we can we don't really need it in this notation. It just may help you guys to see it as h of f of negative 2 in this case. So the first thing we're going to do is we got to look inside those parentheses and figure out what f of negative 2 is. Well, that would be x squared, so that's a negative 2 squared, minus 6 times negative 2, plus 2. So f of 2, a uh, negative 2 rather, is 4 plus 12 plus 2. I am skipping some steps here. So f of negative 2 looks like it is uh, 18, right? <clears throat> Now what we want though is h of f of negative 2, which really is just h of f of negative 2 is 18. And h of x is the square root of x, so I've really got the square root of 18. And uh, so, I guess, to write this finally, we have h of f of negative 2 equals the square root of 18 can be split up, right? we got a perfect square amongst its factors. So it's the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So it's really 3 times the square root of 2. So h of f of negative 2 is 3 times the square root of 2. to click